Apparently, a lot of us are suffering from the Sunday scaries. But it seems to me that part of the problem here is, or maybe part of addressing this Sunday scary situation, is to ask ourselves, are we really making Sundays what they can and should be? Are we experiencing Sunday the way that God wants us and calls us, indeed, even in some sense, commands us to live Sunday? If we really get Sunday right, it's not going to be scary. There might indeed be an aspect of, hmm, I'm sad it's done. But nothing wrong with that. Let's think about what the Sunday is. I'm going to go to the Catholic Catechism here, 2184. Just as God, quote, rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done, end quote, that's from Genesis, human life has a rhythm of work and rest. The institution of the Lord's Day helps everyone enjoy adequate rest and leisure to cultivate their familial, cultural, social, and religious lives. So the institution of the Lord's Day helps everyone enjoy dot 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 let's 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 focus on that for a moment there's something very beautiful here first of all the lord's day was instituted let's 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 remember the the subject of who's doing the instituting here is god right the church didn't quote institute the lord's day god did right from the beginning so this is part of the plan part of a loving plan for us is that we need to set aside one day a week for something extremely important. So the command, and it is a command, right? Keep holy the Lord's day, keep holy the Sabbath. Clearly, God's commands are always about us. They're always for our good. So we do well here to think about how is this going to help us? How is it for our good? Let's think a little bit about this rest aspect, a day of rest. Rest is a very, very rich notion. Let me get philosophical with you here real quick. One one great philosopher I love to read named Joseph Pieper, anything by him is always worth your looking at. When he addresses this, he speaks of a distinction between two kinds of rest, resting from and resting in. Prepositions can be very important. Resting from something and resting in something. So by and large, you rest from things that are uh, take a lot of exertion. So it's kind of like, oh, whew, I, I need to pause and kind of rest up. Rest from that. And that has an important place in life. Then there's certain things that are so rich that we rest in them. Resting in is a different kind of thing from resting from. To really rest in in the higher things, the richer things, we do need to rest from all the busyness. So this is an important way to see what the Lord's Day is. It's a day where we are commanded to rest from certain external things so that we're better able to rest in what matters. We might say rest in the arms of the Lord to go with him and be with him. This is why part of the the church's understanding of how we keep holy the Lord's Day is we go to Mass. That Mass is a way of resting with the Lord, of entering into the richness. And then that kind of sets the tone for a day of richness. So if we take this approach where the Lord's Day is a gift, designed by God, something we actually need to learn more how to observe well. I think if we're looking for kind of the solution to the Sunday scares, I don't think there's any better solution than kind of go to the wisdom of the ages, go to the wisdom of the church, go to the goodness of God in instituting the Lord's Day, and let's get more intentional about observing it and keeping it and realizing, wow, Here's the richness. Here's the richness that by the church's understanding is a kind of beginning now of what we're called to do forever in heaven. But we're not in heaven yet. So we get kind of that one day a week where we do that. And then 
we go back to the other work that we do, reinvigorated with a sense of the meaning and the purpose of all of it.